thanks everyone for taking time out of your day to join us today to talk about uh, some performance measurement in the world of software maintenance. Um, some of you may have seen or, or uh, heard me talk about um, 10 habits of highly effective measurement programs. Um, we tend to focus on metrics uh, in the software development world in that sort of development phase. And when you think about it, so much uh, happens in, in maintenance and support and, and sort of ongoing production of uh, software systems that um, I, I really don't think that it gets the uh, attention and focus that it, it deserves. So I put this together in, in, uh, in hopes of sort of generating discussion and um, maybe planting the seeds of ideas uh, as you move forward in, in your organizations with uh, software maintenance and enhancements. Before we get into that aspect of it, I, I do want to talk about um, the approach that we use for, for setting up uh, a measurement program, and that's the goal question measure. Uh, we will get into maintenance versus development, how those two activities are different. We'll talk about the five questions and um, also provide some example measures. And I say those are examples because um, there are a lot of different measures that can answer the, these questions depending on what it is that you're, you're looking for. And you get to that through the goal question measure construct. So let's talk about that first. Um, the, so the goal question framework. Trying to start a metrics program without really understanding your organizational goals is really like trying to build a house without any kind of plans, architectural drawings or engineering plans. Uh, you'll end up with something, but will it be what you were looking for? Will it be useful? Will you be able to even use it? And chances are it probably won't stand too long. It won't last long enough to be of any real use for you. Or it's like getting into your car for a road trip to a place you've never been before without your map or GPS. You're going to end up somewhere, but is, is it really where you want it to be? Chances are you're going to get lost along the way and spend a lot of frustrating time and energy trying to get back on track. So approaching measurement with the goal question measure framework really helps lay that plan out for you in terms of where are we going as an organization, what is it we want to accomplish, and how do we measure how we get there. Um, you start with the conceptual, what are business goals, the operational moving into the questions that you need to answer to achieve those, I mean, whether or not you're achieving those goals or making progress toward the, towards those goals. And then finally, the quantitative aspects of what metrics will answer those questions. So you have that, that, uh, that tie, that continuity throughout that uh, framework that really helps make sure that you're heading in the direction that you want to be heading. Um, highly successive, successful measurement programs really directly feed your business objectives and going through a GQM exercise in connection. Uh, your metrics are tailored to your organization. It, it plays an instructive role, a predictive role in your organization. It helps identify where trouble, prob, uh, trouble areas are and allows you to uh, work to solve those before they become um, realized risks. Trouble is, and the challenge is goals aren't always defined. And if you get a lot of leaders in a room and say, okay, let's, let's hash out what our organizational goals are, you may be there quite some time. It can be difficult to say the least. Um, so what I do recommend, if you don't have goals uh, defined already, let's, let's sort of test some theories here. If your goals aren't defined for your organization, um, does that mean that you can't set this up within this framework, set, set up a measure, measurement program within a GQM framework. Um, is that goals are important to a successful measurement program. That's true. Do not have articulated or documented goals. That's true. And then getting leadership or key stakeholders together to uh, agree on a set of goals can be extremely challenging. I think we can all agree that's true. true. If all do, then the hypothesis would be that we cannot start a measurement program using that GQM framework, and I would say that that's false. Goals are indeed important to a successful measurement program, but what happens if we take the GQM framework down to a more tactical level to the area of questions? Really thinking about or listening to what are the leaders within the organization asking? What do they want to know about the organization, about the the, the work that's being done? What keeps them up at night thinking about the business? 
those and listening to those and, and sort of distilling them down into consistent themes really allows you to identify what those key issues and information needs are for the organization. Um, and then identifying the kinds of data that will answer these questions and meet those information needs. And in essence, allows you to reverse engineer what the goals of the organization might be. So if you start with those questions, um, it's really down at that level where people are thinking, people are, are doing and acting, uh, and it allows you to then think about the bigger picture. Um, approaching a measurement program uh, with a, a GQM modified strategy uh, at the ground level. If you start at, at, at data level, this fails. What data do we have? Let, good, because let the data is there. You, you're going to end up with garbage. Um, you're going to end up with measures that nobody understands how to use. I should start with goals if, if the organization has those clearly articulate, articulated. But if you cannot, then the questions are an excellent starting point because they bridge the gap between the goals and the measures. They help people communicate their common information needs, and they drive the discussion of progress towards goals and the effectiveness of the measures. It's really a good bridge. So, um, so I, uh, you know, just because you don't have clearly articulated goals or don't have the time to go through that type of goal-defining exercise doesn't mean you can't apply the GQM framework in setting up a measurement program. Flitcher of software maintenance versus software development. First of all, what do we mean by software maintenance? about the process of modifying an existing software system or component after the initial delivery. You do this to correct faults, improve performance or other attributes, or adapt to a change environment. Add features, enhancements that the users have decided they need or want. Them. And I think the second part is key because it's really sometimes overlooked by customers. Um, Software take up a great deal of maintenance effort. Uh, you may not be fixing things. You may be adding new features in, uh, enhancing existing features, but that's part of a system's life cycle. And uh, as a user needs adapt, the software must adapt as well, and that becomes part of the maintenance organization's responsibility, or it can anyway. So how are maintenance and development different in the world of software development? Well, the the, the nature of the activities themselves are different. When we're developing, we're creating and building, uh, definitely more sexy than fixing bugs or supporting uh, the end users uh, with usability aspects or fixing performance issues. Maintenance typically, typically accounts for 70% of, of total, total software lifecycle costs. So we are talking about a majority of lifecycle costs over the, over the course of a system's happens during maintenance. Uh, some estimates are as, 90 as high as 90% or as low as 40%. Obviously, it depends on the quality of the software, the uh, amount of uh, churn you have or uh, additional requirements that, that happen after the fact. So um, there's no you know, set number here that anyone can, can point to to say this is absolutely it. It varies from system to system. But I think we can all agree that it is a significant investment. And some, uh, some data points put annual maintenance expenditures uh, in this country at over $70 billion in software uh, maintenance and enhancement. So that's a, a significant investment. And it's really